Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be diving into Photoshop where we're going to talk about skin retouching and frequency separation. It's actually really easy. We're going to go through everything you need to be able to do all of that kind of stuff because it's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week, we're diving into Photoshop. We're gonna be talking about skin retouching. We're gonna talk about frequency separation, kind of do's and don'ts. My entire workflow for doing this. Let's just dive into it and let's get this going. I've already got the photo loaded up here. I've just loaded this up in Photoshop so we can start from, from scratch, fresh. And we're gonna go through everything you need to do to do skin retouching. Now, first of all, I think it's important I say, my model here has actually got really nice skin already, so there's not gonna be a whole lot that we are gonna be doing anyway to her skin, but the principles that we use here apply in pretty much all situations, and there's lots of different techniques that we're gonna go through that you can use, and hopefully that will help with any skin retouching you want to do. It's, of course, an interesting area because it's an area where you maybe don't want to go too far. It's very easy to go too far with it. You get that super smooth skin. I've certainly done that before and it, it just looks super fake and, and it's just not good at all. It's really easy to go overboard. So you want to try and restrain yourself. And there's also an element of kind of morality with it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you 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 know, what's a blemish? and what's just a natural character part of the face. You know, I would never really remove something like a mole or something like that because that's part of someone. And to remove it is kind of to say something about what you think is beauty and all that kind of stuff. And that's not really something that I want to get into, but generally speaking, we're talking about little blemishes, a pimple, you know, a little a little spot or something like that. that you might want to just, you might just get rid of a little bit of redness from that specific day that you couldn't correct at the time, but you can correct in post. So with all that said, Let's dive back into Photoshop. So I've got my photo here. We're gonna start off by just, by just duplicating that background layer because that's always where I start with Photoshop. So we can do that. I just click the little lock symbol there to unlock the background layer and I'm just gonna press Control J. That's gonna duplicate the layer and that means we've always got that background layer to come back to. I'm actually going to duplicate it again. I'm gonna press Control J again so we've got two copies. Now the reason I'm gonna do that is we want to actually separate out the texture of the skin and actually of the whole photo from the color so that we can we can actually affect each one individually. So for example, we can correct things like little blemishes in the texture without necessarily changing the color and, and having problems with that. So the reason we're gonna do that is to make it easier to actually go in and correct different things. We can also correct colors as well without ruining the texture as well. So let's do that first of all. Let's name that first duplicated layer as color. Now you can do that by just double clicking the name there and I've just typed in color. Let's lay, name the next layer texture. Now that bottom layer, layer zero, that's our background layer. We're not gonna touch that. That's just there so that we've got a reference kind of layer for how it was first of all. Now I have already edited this photo in Lightroom. So I've made the edits I wanna make, but we're going in specifically on the actual skin here. So let's just hide that texture layer for a second and let's select the color layer. So what I wanna do first of all, is I'm gonna actually wanna blur this because that's gonna remove all the texture from this layer. We're gonna be left with just the colors. Because if we apply a nice blur, all the textures of the skin, if I zoom in a little bit here, which I can do by pressing Alt and holding it and then using the mouse wheel, all the texture of the skin is going to be gone. We're gonna be left with just the color. So we're gonna have that layer selected, come up here to filter, down to blur, and we're gonna go for Gaussian blur. I call it Gaussian blur. I've heard people say Gaussian or Gaussian. However one you want to say it is absolutely fine with me. Maybe we'll go Gaussian. Gaussian blur. And I generally go for, you can see Photoshop's remembered the last time I did it, around 30. But you can use this slider to apply different levels of blur. So starting at the lower part, you can see that we're keeping a lot of the detail there. We want to increase this. Now, as we bring this slider up, it's going to be increasing the amount of blur that we're applying to the photo. So you can see as I go up to 22, that's really quite blurred now, but I want to take it up just to the point where we've really gotten rid of any texture and we've just got the color left. So I take it up to usually around 30. In fact, let's type in 30 and let's click OK. Now, if I zoom back out, the photo is nicely blurred. 
I think we've pretty much gotten rid of the texture there. So we're gonna use that as our layer to for just the color in this photo and specifically for the skin actually. And then we're gonna use our next layer, the texture layer, specifically for the texture. So we need to remove the color from that layer. Now, first things first, I'm gonna turn that layer back on and you can see it's back to normal now. Let's come up here to image and down to apply image. And this is gonna allow us to remove uh, one of the other layers from the photo, from this layer, so that we're just left with the texture. So if we remove the color, we just have the texture. So let's select the layer we want to remove. Let's go for color. Let's invert this as well. And let's select the blending as add down here. And it's important to keep the scale here on the right as two. This is gonna allow us, as you can see, to remove basically the color from our photo. Now, if I press okay and zoom out, we're now left with the photo looking like this. So we've got the texture on this layer. We've got the color on the layer below. And if I turn the texture layer back on, now we need to blend these two layers together so that we can have the photo looking as it should, but we've got the separated out texture and color. And we can do this by just using a blending mode for the texture layer. So let's go ahead and click on the, on the blending modes for the texture layer. We're gonna use linear light. And you can see that by doing that, we've basically applied that texture on top of the color. We've now got them separated out but our photo looks as it should. So now, when we zoom in, let's just click on the photo, when we zoom in, we're gonna be able to affect either the texture or the color without affecting the other one. So now we can begin things like skin retouching and changing colors and all that kind of stuff. So next we need to talk about the different ways that we can actually do a bit of skin retouching because there's a few different methods that we can go for. There's one in particular that I use, but I'm gonna go through kind of the main ways that we might wanna do this. So you can see there might be a couple of little blemishes. Everyone has little blemishes on their skin. The easiest way we can do it is with something like the spot healing brush. So over on the top left here, we can go to, just here we've got the spot healing brush tool. That's going to allow us to, let's hold Alt, use the right mouse button, and just scroll left to scale that down, scroll right or left to, to change the scale of this. And we can just use that to paint over and, and uh, Photoshop's going to fill in the area that we do that. That's a really easy way of doing things, but it's not actually my preferred method. So I'm gonna just undo that by pressing Control Z. We've also got the healing brush, which works very similarly. So you can just left click and hold on the spot healing brush and you can get the healing brush tool. Now this allows us to define an area that we want to use to actually heal. So we can Alt, left click on one area and then heal another area using that. Now I like that method. I think that works really well. I think you're in a lot of control over how you want this to look. But the method that I will generally use, I'm gonna press Control Z to just undo those is actually the clone stamp tool. And this allows us to take part of the image and actually clone it to another part. And this is a great way, in my opinion, of actually getting rid of blemishes, replacing it with other bits. And I think it works really well. There's, I tend to use it with a relatively low flow, which you may have heard me talk about in other videos, but essentially it means that as we're painting on with the brush, if we have a flow of 50, it means we're painting on at 50% opacity, but we can paint over it to build that up. So we can get up to 100% opacity, but we don't start there. And I really like that because it allows you to control just how much you're doing to it. And we can do that just on the texture layer to really just work on these little blemishes. And then I'll show you what we can do with the color layer as well. So let's zoom in. So with the clone sound tool selected, we're just gonna press and hold Alt and left click on an area of the skin to use that as the area that we're going to actually use to then clone over. So we just find a good area of the skin here like this and just paint over some of the other bits of skin. Now, because we've just using the texture layer, this works really nicely. We keep the texture of the skin. We're not affecting the color really. You know, there might be some areas where it does affect the color in some ways, but we're able to just paint over any of these tiny blemishes that we just want to correct without making it look super fake or anything like that. And we can just go around and do all of that. And you can see how, just how easy this is, you know? You're just selecting new areas to clone over that you think look similar. 
and just painting that in. It's really, really straightforward and it can make a huge difference. And especially when you've got a model like this, it just really doesn't take very long at all. Just go through any of these tiny blemishes. I can actually turn these both these layers off to see what it looked like before, to see how much of a difference we've made. So I can do that by pressing and holding Alt and actually clicking on the little eyeball symbol on our bottom layer. That's going to isolate that layer. And then we can do the same thing, hold Alt and press it again to turn the other layers back on. So if I turn them off, you can see. So we've gone in and we've removed a lot of the kind of tiny little blemishes, but there's some bigger stuff we can do with this as well. So for example, let's use the texture layer here again to just correct some of the area under the eyes. Now, I'm certainly in no position to talk about anything under the eyes, but <laughs> but let's uh, let's go in and just, and just correct a little bit there. So again, we can have our layer selected here, our texture layer. I've reduced the flow down to 40% because I want to, I want to have this you know, quite soft. I want to build this up. And I'm also using a very soft brush, so my hardness is at 0%. And we're going to go ahead and just select an area of the skin like this here. Let's hold Alt and left click. I've increased the size of my brush as well. And I'm just going to paint over that bit under the eye. And then I might just go over it again. And then on the other eye, I'm just going to select that area of the skin kind of around here paint on a little bit. I'm going to select it again because with the hair just here, I don't want to accidentally clone the hair into another area. So I'm going to select it, paint a little bit, select it again, paint a little bit. And then we might want to come down to the color layer and I'm going to zoom in and do a similar sort of thing. So I'm going to select that, that area there and just paint that in. Same over here, select the color, and just paint it in. So here's an interesting thing. So I've zoomed out now, and I actually think that I've gone too far with it. I actually think that the last thing I've just done under the eyes was too much, and I think it looks too unnatural. So how do you go back when we've used two different layers and we've actually done quite a bit? You don't wanna just control Z and redo it. How are we gonna reduce essentially the opacity of what we're trying to do here well, there's a really interesting way of doing this, and it's a technique that I use quite a lot. So first of all, let's combine these two layers. So let's do that by pressing, by clicking on the, the color layer, hold shift and click on the texture layer, and let's press control, shift, alt, E, and that's going to combine those two layers into a new layer, let's call it layer one, and, uh, and that means that we can now edit this layer by itself. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, on the left here, I'm gonna use the history brush tool. So I've got it over here. And this is gonna allow us to essentially restore parts of the image that we've made loads of edits to, to an earlier state. This can be really, really useful for reducing anything you've already done. So let's come up here to flow. I've got it to about 22%. I'm gonna bring that down. I'm just gonna bring it down to about 15%. 14 is fine. Just so we can really build this up. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna have a relatively big brush here and a nice soft brush as well. It wants to be hardness 0%, so we're not getting those hard edges. And I'm just going to quickly paint over under the eyes. I've done it twice there just to build it up a little bit. And I think that that makes it look much more natural. Now, if you think that you've then gone too far with the history brush tool, you can undo that. Perhaps we want to do it once under the eyes instead of twice. And I think that's making it a little bit more natural, a bit more as it was. And you can see that with a low flow, we've just reduced what we've done under the eyes there. So if I now turn off and go back to the original layer so we can see exactly what we've done so far. Let's press and hold Alt and left click this eyeball. And then left click it again to turn everything back on. So this was before we did anything. And this is where we're at now. So I think that looks really good. This is a very quick demonstration, to be honest, anyway. I would normally spend probably quite a bit more time and then separately go in and do a bit of dodging and burning as well, which we've talked about in the past, just to bring out some of the highlights and bring out some of the shadows, really shape the light how we want it. I think that works really well and complements 
some of the skin retouching that we've done here. Now there's lots more skin retouching we can talk about in the future, but I'm already aware this video is probably relatively long. I've already tried to cram in quite a bit of information uh, so far, but if you wanna see any more skin retouching videos, absolutely pop it down in the comments. We can go through all kinds of things. Any other tutorials as well that you might wanna see. I'm hoping we're gonna get out and about and take some photos in the next tutorial Tuesday. But until then, make sure to like and subscribe if you're not already. I will of course see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.